Now, more and more people are abandoning party politics, and this is according to a new Gallup survey. Now, according to this survey, the percentages of everyday Americans that describe themselves as either Democrats or Republicans are actually now at historic lows. So let's kind of break this down. Let's get into the numbers here. Now, according to this survey, only 29% of respondents identify as Democrats. Now, that's significant because it marks the lowest point in the last 27 years. It was only this low back in 2013 when 30% identified as Democrats. Now, on the Republican side, it's not much better. On the Republican side, 26% defined themselves as Republicans in 2015, and that is just one point, just one point, above the party's low back in uh, uh, 2013, which was at 25%. Wow, man, that's bad. Now, about 4 in 10 U.S. adults now say that they are political independents. And that's, of course, uh, in 2015, approximately 42% used that label. So now, there's a, there's, a, there's a good thing. There's a silver lining here for Democrats. Though fewer people are claiming affiliation, according to the poll, with either party, Democrats maintain the voting edge when independents are factored in. Roughly 16% of independents say they lean Democratic. <clears throat> now, onto the results. I think what this shows is a lack of faith in our respective political parties. So let's take me for example, right? Now, I'm strongly considering no longer being part of the Democratic Party. Now, why would that be? I'm a progressive. I'm quite liberal uh, on a lot of issues. Why would I leave the Democratic Party? Well, I don't see them as representing me anymore. I actually kind of see the favoritism towards uh, establishment Democratic politicians, those who are more aligned to Wall Street and the business sector. I see the favoritism, and I also see the machinations of DNC Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I mean, come on. A good example of this is that Debbie Wasserman Schultz has scheduled pretty much all the Democratic debates, save for maybe one on Sundays or the weekends where you had the lowest amount of viewership. She doesn't want to show off the party. If Hillary Clinton is best for the job, and I'm not saying she's not, and I'm not saying she is, why would she not be front and center in a primetime debate? There's no reason to hide her on the weekends. Same thing, Bernie Sanders. If you think he's the best face for the party, why are you going to hide him on the weekends? We should have more debates and they should be on prime time, where most of the American public can see it. At this point, only people who are already know what they're who they're going to vote for are tuning in. That and other media figures that are going to cover the debates. Those are the people that are tuning into these weekend debates, not the majority of the American public. I mean, he scheduled it. She scheduled it next to football. Now what red-blooded American patriot is going to watch a debate over football? Seriously. Those are the types of machinations that I see Debbie Wasserman Schultz doing. Also forming, forming these joint fundraising committees. We did a, st a segment on that as well. Where she set it up with Hillary Clinton to be able to follow money between the parties, uh, the state parties, her party, her super PAC, all sorts of money money funneling going on here and it could all be used to help whomever the dnc wants to send this money to it could be hillary clinton for all we know machinations man i feel that this party is no longer representing me and it's too willing to appease the craziness that is the republican party now i haven't made that decision yet whether or not to no longer identify as a Democrat, but I'm getting close. I'm certainly getting close. And another reason is because the Democrats have actually put things like, for example, cuts to Social Security and Medicare up as bargaining chips 
to get something called a grand bargain. Now, President Obama had pushed for that unsuccessfully, thankfully, uh, and failed. Why? Well, it's because Republicans, doing what Republicans do and going further to the right, they made it so that they wanted to get rid of both Medicare and Social Security. Not just cut it, but cut it deeply and privatize it. That's the stuff that they want to do. And, of course, you couldn't do that. Even President Obama, who was more than willing to put them up as bargaining chips, said, okay, that's a little too far. You know why? Because Bush tried to do that. Bush tried to privatize Medicare, and he got destroyed. I'm sorry, Social Security. He spent all of his political capital trying to privatize Social Security, and he got crushed. Nowadays, it's Democrats that are putting up these cuts. That's not what Democrats do. We should be expanding Social Security. We should be expanding Medicare to everyone. Anyway, so there's the Democratic side. And there's me as an example. I know that's my own anecdote, but I'm not exactly evidence, but I think there are people out there that would agree with me. Now, the Republicans, however, they're far worse. On one hand, uh, on the one side, you have what you had is moderate Republicans, moderate conservatives. Yes, they do exist. There is such a thing. People you can actually have a rational conversation with. Those people, they're no longer part of the Republican Party. The Republican Party has moved way too far to the right for them. They've taken that party off the cliff. And on the other side, you have the absolute crazies that actually think the Republican Party is, get this, too liberal. I know, right? Too liberal. And a good example of those is some of the Trump and Cruz supporters who are more than happy to leave the party to go with Trump if he somehow does an independent writ bid. So, okay. Now, there's another angle here that I want to kind of discuss. And that is that right now, the government really isn't serving the will of the people, right? These political parties are not reflecting their constituents' wishes. We've got record obstruction. We have the corporations that have purchased essentially both parties, politicians, and they only do things that benefit the wealthy and large cor multinational corporations. That's why the recent uh, Princeton study had came out saying that, look, we're, we're an oligarchy. We're not a democracy anymore. We're not a republic anymore. We're an oligarchy. The will of the people, if it doesn't match up with the will of the wealthy and the donor class, well, we don't care about them. Their will doesn't get enacted unless there's a wealthy benefactor that's attached to it who will benefit as well. That's the way it works in America. And people know it. People know it. And they're pissed. That's why in this election cycle, we have two leading people who are outside of the party structure that are drawing huge crowds. You've got Bernie Sanders on the left. You've got Donald Trump on the right. Both of them, of course, are not currently in the mainstream thought of the party. Uh, and in fact, a lot of party insiders don't like either of them. And that's the one thing Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump have in common, is that the party insiders don't exactly like them very much. That's why I say that this is the election of the outsiders. So does it surprise me to see a poll like this? Absolutely not. And here's why. The American people know your bullshit. They see what you're doing. And they don't like it. They have spoken, and they're tired of it. 